Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we're going to be having, I hope, an interesting conversation with Ms. Coco Chanel in the afterlife. Coco Chanel, businesswoman, fashion designer, icon, and also had some mysterious connections during World War II that are curious. Uh, let's say that, curious. All right. So, I'm Ms. Chanel. Come on in. She says, you can call me Coco. You can call me Coco. She has an accent. It's kind of mixed, though. Um, I understand that she's French, but it almost feels a bit... Oh, that sounds bad. I don't want to even say it. German. <laughs> oh, boy. So here's what I know about her. I know that she has had connections during World War II that it was thought that she was a Nazi sympathizer or... Um, someone that actually worked with the Nazis. Um, there's questions if she was an agent, a double agent, a secret agent, or a spy for the Nazis or against the Nazis, or there's all that. There's kind of that drama tra drama around her. Now, usually I don't talk with people about drama stuff, but this is curious in regards to history. And also the fact that she was a very successful businesswoman and there's just there's so many pieces here that we can we could um, learn from and grow from so i've been curious about the business parts of things myself so let's chat with coco chanel thank you for calling thank you for allowing me to call you coco i'm kind of like a little fish out of water here i'm not super like fashionable i don't follow fashion or um, but i did wear chanel number no. five an incredible perfume for a long time like in my uh, like probably mid 20s to 30s early 30s mm -hmm. it was very kind of thick very thick um perfume so i can actually smell it you guys as, as she's here and i see like new york city the streets of new york city she feels very thin to me dark hair and i see big glasses like jackie o glasses jacqueline onassis um jackie kennedy onassis glasses and I feel um, button earrings, not diamonds, but buttons that look like pearl, kind of. Um, I see a lot of pink, light pink, and then black. Um, also, um, some hound's tooth, like hound's tooth skirt, hound's tooth shoes, that kind of thing, uh, patterns. And I don't know, again, I don't know a lot about fashion stuff. So if that's kind of her design or what she's known for, great. You guys can fill in the blanks on that, not me. Um, I feel like a little bit of a fish out of water. It's interesting. Um, so what kind of information can you share with us about looking back over life now that you're in the afterlife as a spirit? Looking back over your life, what are some key themes of your life that you think other people can learn from or key lessons? So either key themes or key lessons. You guys, her face, is, she's very rigid. Like when she speaks, she's very, she sits up very straight and her, she's very serious and her lips are very serious, like um, they're tight kind of. I don't know how to explain that. I can't show it very well, but um, a little bit mod, like 1960s is kind of how I'm seeing her right now. And she's showing me, she's showing me that um, she came back. It's hard to understand her accent. It's kind of thick. And... So instead of hearing her specifically, I'm seeing her like she's showing me pictures and imagery. She's showing me going over to Europe and then coming back and yet going back and forth between like New York and the, um, it almost looked like Switzerland, what, Netherlands, Switzerland area, Swiss, Switzerland area in Europe. Um, So she's just showing me traveling back and forth, back and forth, periods of her life in different places, like blocks of her life in different places. She says, I want to clear up the Nazi conspiracy. The idea that I would be sympathetic to the Nazis and that particular political party is understandable. If you knew the, the dynamics of the social circles that I was connected to in France and in Europe, it was not something that was necessarily political. I know it will be difficult for people to understand that, but it wasn't something that was political, but it was social. It was much more of an affluent uh, con connection. She says it's more of a social connection, like the who's who kind of a thing. 
And she said it's far less um, intriguing than it is laid out to be. However, it is true that I carried information and um, through channels unconventional and was able to gain the confidence of many high-ranking officials in the Nazi party and through that was able to help to um, provide a bigger picture, broader picture of Perhaps it would be the strategies that would be needed, not simply to occupy France, but to understand the people and the culture much more. I never had the desire for the Nazi party to overtake France, nor did I have the desire to be political myself. Whether that is something that is believed or not believed, I did not envision myself as a political leader or even a political advocate. It is true that it can be quite exciting putting yourself into a position of power where there is power and at that time you have to understand it was a very different time not just in america and in europe but in in global by global standards it was very very much a chess game and to be on the correct side was a bit difficult at times to be sure be sure it was it was difficult at times it is not that i ever intended to um, harm anyone or to create uh, suffering by my role and by no means did i absolutely not i would i would uh, vehemently deny any connection to any of that while being affluent does not mean there is in your uh, current society's words racism or prejudices there is simply a desire and a deeper understanding of power and this is what this is about truly power and if you are asking about life themes power would be one being in search of power being around and surrounded by power and then allowing yourself to bring in that power into your your well and then access it to create what it is you wanted to create the empire that i created i'm very proud of my brand my brand <clears throat> It's really hard. I can't get her, her accents very thick and her words are kind of in between. Very proud of what I created and women, there were not many women like me because I understood power and the men that had the power and being around that and in part of that and in those circles gave me the opportunities that I had to fulfill my dreams, to follow my dreams. And yes, I was romantically involved with some authority uh, figure. She said, like authority figure. She's calling them something specific, and I don't know what. And so I can't say exactly. Um, but I see her having different romantic partners and perhaps utilizing her feminine uh, power to uh, sway or... Um, accomplish whatever it is that she was set out to accomplish so so were you i need to ask i want to ask were you a double agent or were you an agent or were you a spy i wouldn't uh, i would not consider myself that no no absolutely not i was not affiliated with the military the militias the armies the i was not i was not at all affiliated with the um, armed forces no no i would not consider myself a spy no no not at all. Not at all. No. 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 Not at all. No. 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 So looking back, Coco, on your life, are there things that you regret about your life? Or 
I mean, it's obvious that you're proud of your brand. It's obvious that you're proud of the business that you built and the empire, as you mentioned, empire, very and, and, and focused on power and understanding how power works and utilizing that, harnessing that energy of power to fulfill your your um, desires, what you wanted to create. So are there things that you regret or things that you wish you could have done differently or, or you know, as a spirit now looking back over your life, how do you feel about that? And she says, it's far different. It's so much different. And you know this, Bridget, you know that it is so much different. It's, it's really hard to describe how, how long ago that feels. Are you, um, are you incarnated again? No, no. There's far too much interest in the historical patterning of the time that I was involved. And I have not uh, made that uh, transition to step into a uh, reincarnation pattern. I have, not, I have not done that. You feel really kind of mellow, like you're in a spa. That's how you feel to me, like in the Swedish Alps or something. Um, she says, oh, Sweden is beautiful. Actually, it's quite beautiful. Um, uh, the Scandinavian countries are, are quite beautiful. And um, I wished I could have had more stability and looking back and having a better relationship with my family, my parents and my brother. And I think she says brother. Either she's saying brother or the other. I think she's saying brother, my brother. There are many things that I gave up for my fame and for my work, my business. And you have to be hard. You have to be really thick skinned, you would say, in order to be able to survive the way I did in the era that I lived in as a successful businesswoman. It was the survival of the fittest indeed, and I did survive. But there are things, you know, the softer things, the softer side of life that I missed out on and did not have the opportunity. There's a man in her life. I don't know if it's a son or if it's a brother, but there is a man that's connected to her that she's making me feel a link to that she wished she had a better relationship with. It was either a son or a brother. It's, they're younger. It feels younger, well, younger or disconnected. There's something, I'm not sure about this because I see energy going to the side. I see energy going down. And so sometimes down energy is like mother, okay? She uh, mentioned, she's showing me some pictures, historic figures like FDR, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, the president of um, the United States at one time. And then she's also showing me um, Winston Churchill, the prime minister in uh, Britain, Great Britain. And, oh, yeah, then I see, um, I see Adolf Hitler, Germany, and just this like triangle. I don't see like a Charles de Gaulle or a president in um, France. I don't see that there's nothing there. There's like no power there, nothing there, nothing, um, nothing. There's nothing there. Fascinating. It feels like she was very intrigued by politics. Very intrigued by politics. So no regret, remorse aside from like the softer sides of things of life and the more lightly feminine, let's say that lightly flat feminine or um, nurturing, loving, kind of motherly kind of vibes. Yeah, I'm not sure you guys if it's a brother or if it's a son she's talking about. There's something here. I'm curious about this. So if you know, please put it in the comments below. Well, thank you, Ms. Chanel, for uh, your candor. Um, I'm not sure if you answered the questions we were asking specifically, but um, we tried to have that connection and conversation with you, so that's good. And it's new for me too. I don't do, usually do a lot of drama, but I feel like um, this historic, this history is important, I think, especially during this time to bring up um, and to remember so that we don't repeat our history. All right, so you have been watching me, Bridget, here at Above Life Channel with a conversation with Coco Chanel in the afterlife. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope that your spirit has gotten inspired a bit. Perhaps you have a little bit more hope in recognition of the afterlife and hopefully our ability as humanity and society to not repeat our past. Mm -mm. Let us not do that. Remember, this is your life and that's where the power is. That's where the true power is. This, this, regardless of your political views, regardless of what country you're living in, regardless of your race, creed, culture, gender, faith, anything that separates us, regardless of that, this is your life, your life. You can make a difference by being the best you you can possibly be. So go out and live it. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching.